Welcome, welcome, patrons. Sometimes you just need to change things up and do a video on a topic that doesn't really affect the series that much. Today's version of that is Eleni Zenovia, or more commonly known as the talking statue in Dragon Age Origins. Dragon Age Origins. So while you meet her no matter what, a mage warden will meet Eleni Zenovia in their origin during Jowen's doomed attempt to free himself and Lily of the Circle Tower. There really isn't much the statue does in the opening other than introduce herself and freak Lily out, so we're just gonna move on to when everyone else meets her in Witch Hunt, which is where she really shines. To sum up the story, you are hunting for Morrigan, who you know is looking for an Alluvian, and Finn, a circle mage, goes to ask Eleni Zenovia for help. When you get down there, the veil in the circle basement has torn and spirits are going haywire, so she is freaked out by what's going on and starts to say some odd things. After defeating the Rifts, and no, we're not going to talk about how that could be, as the series just assumes that this isn't a big deal, and so are we, she tells the group a bit about how to find the Alluvian, and in doing so, tells the small story of the Kadash Taig, which is a story for another day. But in short, Kadash Taig was once known as Kat Halash, and was a dwarven settlement that took in fleeing elves from the fall of Arlathan. She then tells Finn that they will not meet again, which does freak him out. And that is her complete appearance in the series thus far. History so why do I want to talk about this one statue? Well, for two reasons. One is that she has a very special place in Theodosian history. See, while she makes a big deal about being the consort and advisor to Archon Valerius, her better claim to fame would actually be the mother of Archon Hesarion, the man who ended Andraste's life. We don't know too much about her history when she was alive and not a statue. We know that her prophetic dreams led her to help Archon Valerius's rise to power. However, when she then foretold of his downfall, he was outraged and bound her spirit to a statue so people could mock her wrong predictions. Which, this is a good time to point out that what Eleni is and what Solus does to people are different. Eleni is a spirit, perhaps even her real soul, although that's debatable, trapped in a random statue. Solus turns flesh to stone, and we assume the soul leaves the new statue as we've yet to see when talk, although that could be reversed later in the series, but for now, these are two different magical spells. Anyway, her son Hesarion would later go on to face with another prophet, Andraste, and take mercy on her, killing her with a sword rather than have her burn alive. The world of Thetis points out that while Hesarion claims he heard the voice of the Maker to give Andraste mercy, how much of that mercy was actually inspired by listening to his own mother be mocked and trapped in stone? Or perhaps she even told him to do what he did. Now, this does bring up the question as why Lenny Zenobia would bring up the Maker when you talk to her, as Andraste started the spread of the cult of the Maker long after she was trapped in the statue. Well, her son, Hesarion, would go on to further the Maker in the Imperium, and even ban the Old Gods. While we have no record stating that Hesarion was close to his mother, if there was any positive relationship, or at the very least she was good at prophecy, she would hear about the Maker and the Chant of Light, and... And maybe that turned her heart. I don't know. It's just not out of the realm of possibility that for some reason she became Andrastian later in her <laughs> statue life. I don't know. Now, as for how her statue came to be in Ferelden, I can only offer a theory. See, the Circle Tower in Ferelden was actually built by the Deventers long ago. They did so because they believed Lake Callanhad was blessed by Razakale, the old god of mysteries. Her followers would also be blessed with prophecies. Perhaps Asarian sent her there to be surrounded by the waters of the old god she, I'm assuming here, associated with, or perhaps the old god's followers brought the statue there themselves. There is also something to be said about Razakale being associated with the constellation Alluvia and the practice of scrying, while Eleni Zenovia suggests scrying for an Alluvian, but I don't really have much to say on that, and that could just be a wild coincidence, but there's that. The second reason why I want to talk about her is that she stands in a unique place in Dragon Age lore. She's sort of a theory red herring, and this is a little bit of strange wording because I can't find the right words for it, but she sounds mysterious and gives a few, perhaps interesting lines, but she doesn't actually say anything. Honestly, when Jowen makes fun of her, saying that what she says is so vague that even he can do it, he is probably more right than he has ever been in his entire life, or at least in the game. In a forum post, both Mike Laylaw and David Gator posted about Zenovia. From Laidlaw, I'll give you this, there's something to Eleni's prophecies. They're not completely random. What she's talking about though, well, you'll have to wait and see. And then from Gator, well, they could just be vague predictions that a writer tossed in there which could potentially be ascribed to anything in the future, which makes us look prescient, like we had it planned all along, or it could be about something specific. And you will see Eleni again. Scary, huh? 
While this could be taken many ways, when you keep these posts in mind and you also really listen to what she is saying and where the games have gone since then, I think it becomes clear. Her words were written to try and be able to fit plot points. While they have certain plot points in mind, they don't really know how they will pan out. So really, the best information her words can ever give us will be that. The vague sense that something big will be happening or has happened in Thetis. Which in the big scheme of themes is actually incredibly unhelpful. <laughs> Now, out of everything she says, which honestly isn't much, but the one thing that she has said that's been talked about the most is this line. Weep not for me, child. Stone they made me, and stone I am, eternal and unfeeling. And I shall endure till the Maker returns to light their fires again. Well, some have taken it to be that she has foretold of the Maker's return, I really read it as that she will be there forever, as if the Maker is not real, then he cannot come back. So like Stone, she'll be there for eternity. So it's not really that she's predicting the Maker will come back, even though it is possible. It could be another way instead, and that applies to everything she says. And that, dear patrons, is all that I have on the mysterious statue in Kinlock Hold. If you still have lingering questions, proof that I'm wrong, comments about your own fan theory, feel free to tweet me at at on Twitter or send a PM to user Gillanon on Reddit. Duress all.